are so glad that Corey Pesaturo is back on Nyberg with his accordion. Now he's a three-time world champion. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just review a little bit. Okay. Why is it that you love this machine so much? Well, the accordion, uh, I mean, it was loved more than any other instrument in the teens into the 20s, and then again it had a huge surge in popularity because of Dick and Tino in late 40s and 50s, and, and it was loved by so many as much as I love it, but uh, since rock and roll came in, it <laughs> kind of died, and uh, it's been there ever since, but I, I love it because there really is no other instrument where you can play as many notes uh, as this, and also you have full control of the volume at all seconds that, that you play. As a kid, when did you pick this up and decide, I think this is pretty cool? But you revolutionized it too. <laughs> trying, trying, yes. Yeah. Uh, my dad played, being an Italian family, he played. Uh, because of Dick Cantino, we saw him on the Ed Sullivan show. Uh, and I want to play accordion. This was back in the 50s into the 60s. And then he quit until I was about nine. Uh, and then he took it out playing again. He said, Hey, you want to play accordion? And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I didn't think it would be my career. I just, you know, wanted to make him happy. Okay, I'll play accordion. Uh, and then I realized I had a talent for it, so I said, mm, maybe I should try to be more serious with this. Um, and then I grew to love it, and now it's my career. How does one become a world champion? Uh, well, obviously practice, <laughs> but a lot of practice and How a lot of How many hours listening. a day? Well, I, a physical playing, I really only practiced about one hour a day, but I listen a lot. And this is something I teach when I do master classes on music theory versus master classes on accordion is listening is vital in music. You can't, you know, the physical playing is one aspect. You have to have the tools, but you have to have the creativity. So it's, it's a lot of analyzing and so many hours a day when you combine everything associated with music. But physical playing, yeah, maybe an hour, I don't know. So world champion, <laughs> the first time was where? Uh, the first time was in New Zealand. Which is really why I went, because I had retired from competition when I, <laughs> the first time, like the Brett Favre of the accordion. <laughs> uh, and when I won a national championship, I was 15, and that's all I wanted to achieve, just national championship. And then I wanted to just become a great musician on the accordion. Uh, but this world digital category, which this is a digital accordion, uh, they first had this as a world championship, and it was in New Zealand. So I was like, ah! Oh, that I think sounds I'll jump fun. Into yeah, that. I think I'll jump into that. And yeah. then I, I won that, and then I retired again. And then all these other two came about. The second time was where? It was at Canada. Uh, and that was a jazz one. So I was like, well, I, I should be able to win that. That's not a problem. But then the acoustic one I did because of the one we were just talking about in Finland. It was on national TV. It's the only you know, competition in accordion history. It's on national TV in Finland. And uh, the competition wasn't just whoever makes the most mistakes loses and least mistakes wins, which is a lot of classical competitions. This was you had to show a full variety of musicianship and you got a whole band. So it was very fun. Plus, you got to go to Finland. So, and people were saying around the country, Corey can play electric accordion, but he can't play acoustic. So, you know, I'm uh -huh. Italian. It's like, oh, oh, okay. I yes, can't. The okay. gauntlet was down. Yeah, and <laughs> the gauntlet was do down. So. Um, so, you've set some, uh, you set a world record. <laughs> Yes, that is the newest piece of news. Right. And we have a picture of that, too, when, when you did do that. Uh, describe <laughs> the thrill of this, and where was this? So uh, I, I have some great contacts at Red Bull, as I've been doing things for the Red Bull Formula One team, but I actually just did a couple of weeks ago. So you've ago. got sponsors. Yeah, so I, I contacted my people at Red Bull, which I know no people my in the United people, States. I my know. people, yeah. <laughs> my people uh, in Austria, because Red Bull's an Austrian company. And they said, yeah, I, I, I said, you like doing crazy things. Why don't we try to break the world record for longest accordion playing and they said yeah that sounds like a crazy idea because they sponsor crazy things and they flew me over there and uh, hired all these witnesses to be with me and, and I played 32 hours and 14 how minutes how do you do that it's all mental I, I didn't prepare at all for it I was gonna you know do some gym stuff and I was gonna do maybe a 16 hour test run and write down everything and then I said eh, it's probably better to just save all my energy and just put it all into the when I do the record and it worked because at hour 12 your body's like you need to stop this doesn't work and you got 20 hours left so it's all mine you just keep saying I gotta do it I gotta do it I gotta. plus Red Bull spent all this money to have this happen so how do you do keep it. yourself going because you have to constantly play for 32 <laughs> hours it, I would I wouldn't do it again. It, it hurt the lower arms. I mean, what and was the, the last note at, at hour 32 and you know one second to go? What was last noted? Yeah, like the no. last. The you know when you were when you knew you were going to hit 32 hours and what was? Well, it, it was more the, the record before was 31 hours. So it was more when I passed that. It was like okay. Now I, I could have kept going, but I was really worried about 
my hands. Yeah, I was going to say. I was very worried because most of the people that would attempt a record like this, it's not their career. They would just play accordion or whatever instrument it is they're doing for fun. And this is actually my career. I can't damage myself. So I was worried. And I said, okay, that's enough. The, the, the 32, we're good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it, it was incredibly difficult. But really, I would attribute, uh, I had a very, you know, my, my parents are tough love. And that's how I've achieved. You know, anytime I made an achievement, they're like, yeah, especially my dad. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> so it, it makes you, okay, I got to get more. So it was the tough love training, uh, the non participation trophy kind of vibe is that it's just like you know it's not enough you got to keep going keep going keep going yeah, it's not enough so that really helped in being able to achieve this because it was incredibly difficult so you're 29 years old and you're getting sort of booked all over the world what's the strangest place you've ever played the strangest uh, I have played twice in Tunisia which um, is actually quite a nice country uh, my do they violence. love accordions there? Yeah, accordions a thing there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's it's less weird than here. I'll say that. I mean, still today you say play accordion. Oh, accordion. yeah. How weird is it in the U.S.? <laughs> it's still very weird. Uh, I'm trying to make it a thing where it's it's cool and it's normal, but uh, it's 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 a challenge. It's coming. It's coming up. But yeah, I would probably say New Zealand was uh, maybe the the strangest place I have played. Um, but I've, I've played in New Zealand. I've played in Japan. Uh, I've been to all continents except Antarctica, which I'm a snow nut, so I really would like okay, to play so in Antarctica. Okay, so we need them to, to book for me. <laughs> yeah, I would Antarctica. love to play for the penguins. That would be amazing. All right, let's take a look at this now. It, it, you're going to play in a second, mm -hmm. but the different ranges, the things, this, this is a very different accordion. Yes, so um, most accordions, of course, are like harmonicas, and that was really the original design of it. There's all reed blocks inside an accordion that are just like harmonicas, and when you pull the bellows, they're pushing air through the reeds. So instead of you blowing a harmonica, the air is the bellows. Uh, on an electric accordion such as this, there's no reeds. It's just all computer chips, and a an engineer here would be able to understand it way better than I would. <laughs> but it's all MIDI sounds and everything. And the what bellows does this still cost? work. These cost, uh, say, around $5,000, which is actually quite cheap because a lot of acoustic, the high-end acoustic accordions can cost you $25,000 plus. Okay. Uh, but there's 3,000 moving parts in an accordion, so pretty cheap compared to what you're actually getting, and there's so much going on with an accordion. Did you adapt this to you? Uh, yeah, so th this is heavily modified, uh, just like I'm a car guy, so it's like if you have your own car, you modify it usually. So this is my modified accordion. I, I have, you know, the, the CPEZ, which is my shortened, uh, I guess, hip name, whatever. <laughs> CPEZ. Of CPEZ, yeah. It's a, you need short things, say, for marketing. Uh, and as you can see, it's, a, it's the only skinned accordion that's ever existed. This is why some of the keys that's are That's ever off. existed. Yeah, I, I try to do things that no one's ever done. Uh, the lights that you'll see, uh, which we'll get to in a minute, um, they, no one had ever, I thought no one had ever done that. Actually, someone 50 years before I did this had no put lights in there. No one will remember. Yeah, well, no, but I, I know the woman that has it. We're very good friends, and uh, eventually I will, I will have that accordion. So I'll have the only two accordions that have lights in the grill. But they're symmetrical, you know, so it depends on which note you hit that actually... You know, you can kind of see it going down like that. So it's it's when I play more for a younger crowd, they want to see electronic stuff. So you I do jazz this. on it. You do yep. acoustic on it. Of you course. do what else happens on ring tones? <laughs> yeah, we're having some fun with ring tones. Okay, I, give me a little ring tone from a uh, phone. Uh, a a ring tone, yeah. Well, I mean, there's this uh, there's a lot here. Where's uh, the vibes? Yeah. Which I like doing at sound checks. I freak people out at sound checks. Do you read uh, music? Or yes. Do you, or you kind of well, make stuff up as you go? When I, I went to New England Conservatory of Music in Boston for music, and the department I was in was a contemporary improv department, and that was all ears. So it was almost illegal. You went to jail if you were caught with music. <laughs> but So we wanted to train the ears. But of course I, I read music, um, and that, that's a skill you must have. And how much stuff do you write on your own? Writing is probably not that much. That's maybe the least of what I do. I do a lot of improvisation, a lot of arranging. Writing, not too much, because I'm always playing a lot of other people's things when I'm going around the country. I play about 13 different genres pretty consistently, whether it's klezmer, Italian, French. Uh, my next trip is Detroit. I'm doing a whole Italian festival there. Uh, in Las Vegas, I and do... And is it doing, all here? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all here. 
It's all there. So do you have a photographic memory? <laughs> no, I wish I did, but no, I don't. <laughs> but you, you just practice and you, and you just remember everything. Well, yeah, and the other thing is like if I hear a song, I can kind of practice it even just sitting like this. I can kind of practice it in my head without playing it, which is good because if I'm going to some event and they want me to learn a tune, I'm driving there, as long as I have it on YouTube or something, I can kind of learn it when I get there. Uh, is this good. completely work or is it completely pleasure? I mean, the playing of it is definitely pleasure. Uh, the work of the music business is not really the playing, which is funny because when you get hired for, say, a wedding, and they say, if, if, can we have you play half as long and pay you half as much? It's like, well, no, the playing is the fun part. Once we're there and set up, we can play for eight hours or one hour. It doesn't matter. It's really the, the work of getting great, whether in practice and everything else, uh, and learning. So. I mean, that's really the, the work or set up and, and travel and all that. But the, no, the playing is, is tremendous. Now, you made a promise the last time you were here that yes. you're, you're going to design yep. an accordion mm -hmm. that does what? Uh, well, it's going to be completely different. It will not look like, because th this is basically the way accordions have looked for over 100 years, this basic shape. Uh, and th the thing with accordion is it's still, no matter what you do, you, it's hard to move around with it a lot. And, you know, with guitar players and singers are jumping around on stage and they're dancing and this and that. You can't really do this with a 25-pound instrument. You're trying to make instrument. it sexier. Yes. It, you okay. have, it has to be sexy to be marketable. That. So I, I'm trying to completely redesign the way an accordion looks. The most important part is that it has some kind of bellows. Now, it doesn't have to be bellows. It could be a D-beam or it could be some kind of And you of can't give thing. away your secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't it, have to be air. Is it designed? You just haven't made it yet? Are yeah, you oh, no, it's, it's, it's designed. It and now designed. I, have, I have some great friends at MIT and they have 3D printers. Well, who doesn't? No, I'm yeah. <laughs> I do a lot at MIT, so there's 3D printers there so we can really kind of, and I have a lot of the parts kind of designed in an accordion that I can take apart to use to make this shape. But it's more just changing the shape of it. Um, so I'm not going to yeah. need younger. When is this going to be done? <laughs> I know when I finally have some time of travel. This year has been insane travel. So uh, when I'm finally uh, have some downtime and I can get to this. And um, so then once you have this thing, thing. that you're designing thing. and it's all sexy and cool, yes. then you're going to play with rock and roll stars and you're going to well, country that's... western. I mean, what are you, you going to do with uh, this? Well, I'm in L.A. a lot because uh, there's a lot of connections to be made out there and there's no accordion person out there. So and whenever I'm meeting people, like, oh, good, uh, give me your card. because Shouldn't you be no in accordion. a big band, in an orchestra? Well, I, I mean, I'm trying to get with... Say some big pop star that doesn't happen because you know all these pop stars. The band is basically the same: some kind of keyboard, some kind of guitar, some kind of bass. You know, electric sounds. But it's like I'm looking for someone that's like, we need something unique, and this can yeah, do anything. I don't anything. know why somebody hasn't picked that up. I really don't understand it because it's it's the thing is the music business knows what works, and they don't right now want to deviate from. They need the to basic think outside system. the box. I know, and accordion. I, I can do anything on this. So. Uh, so yeah. that's once you get this thing, is, are you going to call it something, or you don't know? Uh, well, it'll have Corey in it somewhere. Maybe some C or something, or maybe yeah. you know, the CPA, yeah. who knows. <laughs> so what's bit. the timetable? The time, oh, well, I mean, let's see. I'm not going to be traveling the next couple of months, so actually I can finally really get to this. Um, How about we make it 2018? Traveling. Oh, yeah, no, definitely 2018. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not going to be. I mean, the design of it is. Will it light up like this one does? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll have some kind of light. It'll be on very it. cool, right? <laughs> I'm excited. All right, Corey, you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna play for us. Is there anything you want to tell us about the future of you and this accordion? Um, well, I mean, look for accordion to to become cool again. I mean, I, I'm I'm deep in this. Is that your quest. tagline? Well, I'm I, you know just trying to revolutionize the accordion, make it uh, a cool thing as it was. And uh, it's been so long. It's like a, a guitar has rained for 50 years. Uh, take a break. <laughs> Let's get back to accordion. It's right. just tough to get kids to think, I want to play an instrument. Accordion. You know, it's, it's well, either drums, piano, stop. or guitar. No, no. I'm, I'm well into this, this quest of mine. All so. right. We're going to let you prepare, and then we're going to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
suits when one they send Who is this girl I spend all night kissing And if one was right here then who else is missing Got a little sidetrack to find us a wish And I find the piece of the door but it's also a metaphor Things keep locked in the grocery store of a mind Just the same time Skip right ahead in the nice ride